Om Shanti, slogan from the Merle of the 1st of May. Always consider your mind to be God's property and use it for elevated tasks. Always consider your mind to be God's property and use it for elevated tasks. This is a very beautiful thought, isn't it? That at last I have some kind of offer that one day will heal this mind. Because one thing that becomes clear as we begin our Brahmin life, it's that all this distress we would have had in our life, all the ways relationships have gotten so complicated, all the the ways life had become so empty and meaningless, the seed of all of that was what I was holding in my mind and how I was using my mind. Because this is the deal that God is offering us now. He's saying, give me your mind and I'll give it back to you. But then you have to use it as a trustee. In other words, use it the way I would use it and finish using it according to the way you've been using it all these centuries. It means at last I begin to understand how I've been using my mind, how much I've been using my mind for such selfish purposes, how much violence I've perpetuated through the way I've been using my mind. You know, whenever there is defending myself, proving myself right, commenting, criticizing, correcting, all these things are, are such a small, mean way of using this diamond facility called the mind, judging others, selfishness, as if it's in these kinds of energies that I can uh, find myself some value, give myself some kind of identity, to use the mind, to take revenge, hold a grudge, feelings of anger, such violence. (laughs) And now God is saying, just give that to me. Give it to me. This is the deal. (laughs) From time to time, he talks about making this deal. You give me your straws, and I'll give you treasures. Call it the deal call it the inheritance. Imagine a return to a diamond-like machinery working with such perfection to fabricate and produce only beauty. So this is the ultimate surrender, isn't it? I give my mind to him and become a trustee 
I use it only as he would. So it's interesting to think that, or rather to think how God would use my mind. First of all, he would use it to conquer the vices inside me, wouldn't he? As if my mind is God's primary weapon against Ravan, as much as I give that mind to him, and I use it only as he would, as if the whole of the battle between the angels and the devils really takes place there in the mind. And then it's not just that he would use my mind to be able to pull all the thorns, pull all the weeds but he would use my mind to plant the flowers. So he's not just pulling out the vices, but it's there that the virtues, the qualities, get activated, get emerged. He would use my mind to help others conquer their vices. It's like when I use my mind as God would have me use it, my mind becomes like a solar panel reflecting, refracting his light into the drama, into other souls. My mind would be used to purify matter to purify the food before I eat it, to purify the food as I cook it, to purify my own body, to purify the atmosphere. How beautiful to think of myself walking around with a mind like God's. No thoughts other than the kind of thoughts God would have and therefore no feelings or attitude or speech or behavior other than those that God would have. Imagine that original nature emerging again, the true child of God, the one who's activated, claimed the whole inheritance a generous mind, naturally, without any effort, a totally non-violent mind, without any effort. So, the real question is, how to increase my surrender? Because I think when we come to Baba, this is what we want to do. We want to strike (laughs) at the roots of all that violence inside us. We understand that something's broken in our mind. We want to surrender, but how can we deepen the surrender over the shortest amount of time? Because you know, practically speaking, what we're really talking about is increasing soul consciousness. <laughs> That's the deal. If I give my mind to God, it means I'm giving away body consciousness. I'm replacing it with soul consciousness. And in today's Merle Bubba was saying, this is the easiest and yet the most difficult thing. So personally, I would say keep checking in on the advantages of this deal. Keep touching base with the benefits. I mean, 
it's a very beautiful experience which needs to be recorded somewhere and revised from time to time, you know, keeping by a very beautiful notebook in which you can note down the benefits that you have experienced, not just you understand theoretically, but you've experienced in having surrendered your mind. Like, first of all, to surrender my mind, to go for soul consciousness, go and sit in that quiet, clean, neutral space beyond the craziness of my own programmings and conditionings. Sit there whenever there's something challenging you. Don't beat your brains out trying to come to a solution yourself. But just sit there. Be in soul consciousness. Be in remembrance of God. And just see how things can be downloaded. Downloaded. As I move through my day, with less and less of my own programmings and conditionings directing me, but more and more the results of my spiritual efforts, my thoughts are like God's. There's an alignment. And so much can just be downloaded into the mind. Understandings can increase thanks to that downloading. Solutions can emerge, willpower, so that I can proceed according to truth and what is right. It's a kind of magic. When I upgrade my thoughts, when I surrender my mind to his kind of perspectives and ways of thinking, But also, there's the belonging. It's there in the mind. Man, man above means be mine with your mind. The more I keep fine-tuning and tuning up my ways of thinking, my ways of feeling, I am very naturally... (laughs) going to experience more and more that connection, that love, and that belonging. It's like, have I realized what it costs me each time I indulge in my own patterns, my old programmings and conditionings. I indulge in waste, ordinary, not to mention negative thoughts. It's going to cost me this. In the beginning, it didn't matter what I was doing with my mind. Baba pushed himself through the stratospheres and made the connection with this soul, regardless of its impurities. But as we move along in this journey, he will push through less and less because all these studies are so that I start pushing through from my end. And ultimately, even one thought will break the connection, will not allow me to feel that love, that belonging, and I'll be on my own to try to resolve issues and keep myself moving forward. It's the purification process is this. So I can just keep checking in with how much do I want to become pure? Which is another way of saying how much do I want to be happy? Real happiness. How, for how long do I want to continue struggling to understand, struggling to experience a connection? For how long do I want to work with a mind that overthinks, overanalyzes, ends up complicating everything? 
don't I want a clear, clean, blue sky of a mind where the sun is shining brightly, a simple mind? Don't I want to be a self-sovereign because this is the kind of mind which can control the whole of all our senses, all our facilities. And most importantly, do I want the world as it is to continue? For how long should it continue as it is? Because the right use of my mind, using it as God would use it, is is the, the the greatest contribution I can make to the most elevated task there is right now, which is planting seeds for the new golden aged world. As I sow, so I shall reap. We know that. But the real energetics of that dynamic begin with the energy of a thought. It all begins with the quality of my mind. So we need to keep in touch with the benefits, (laughs) the advantages of this deal by way of motivating ourselves. The motivation would be in regards to all the many different routines and disciplines, practices that Baba proposes to us. But practically speaking, in a word, it's the full stop. Full stop. Basically what it means, practically, to consider my mind to be God's property is to understand that it is no longer mine to do with as I please. As if all of this knowledge is just to help me understand what is the godly, right way to use my mind, and with that understanding, full stop, full stop to whatever are my ways of using the mind and full start, we have to start somewhere, right? (laughs) So full start to using the mind the way God would, taking out that old weed of a thought and planting instead a seed of a flower kind of thought. This is the discipline. This is the attention we have to give. This is the um, controlling power and ruling power. And with that, a new world is seeded. A new kingdom can begin. The most elevated task. Om Shanti.